Um, so we also want to be sure to acknowledge that there are many, 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 many pathways possible after high school. And the post high school path that is right for one person is definitely not going to be the same uh, exact perfect fit for the next person. So today is just the first in a series of Fridays at the Fifth episodes that explore what some of these options may be from a first person perspective. So keep in mind that one person's experience can't represent the entire world, but it might be able to help take away some of the anxiety and stress of the unknown. Um, so on that, on that note, we also realized that this topic might involve some academic and higher ed terms that are um, new or confusing to students. So Faith is going to do a quick rundown um, of some key terms that we'll be using today. And I'm going to try to get the tech up for that while you, while you introduce this. Cool. Um, well, number one, so we're talking a lot about um, degrees. So a couple different degrees that you might be interested in looking at if you wanted to pursue specifically musical theater um, or vocal music. Uh, we've got the BA, the Bachelor of Arts, um, and that tends to be more of a, a degree that is um, a focus in uh, either musical theater or theater, but also you are required to take other classes. So right, EA emphasizes education across the arts and scientists. So in addition to like a studio class or a dance class, you would also be required to do general humanities. So like science, foreign language, a history class, that sort of stuff. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more analytical, a little bit more, a uh, um, little bit more sort of universal study. Then we've got your Bachelor of Fine Arts. So that one is more specifically like a conservatory program training. Um, so it tends to be very intense. You tend to not have a lot of room in your schedule for other classes. Like you have to take gen eds depending on the program usually because it is a program from a higher learning institution. Um, but you won't have as much um, space in your schedule for taking like you couldn't do, for example, like a double major. That's not really an option with the BFA. Um, so the conservatories tend to be like, you know, you are studying your craft all the time. Um, the other one that you might consider is a BM, so a Bachelor's of Music. You can do that in vocal, uh, vocal music. Uh, they tend to be more uh, in the opera, um, classical vocal performance world um, but some schools are opening it up a little bit to offer like popular music um, and like jazz and um, country that sort of stuff so there so it's it's opening more gradually um, next up, I think, is uh, talking a little bit about how you might audition for these programs. So uh, there are schools that have their own individual auditions, but then something that sometimes can be more cost efficient is attending a unified audition. So these are the national unified auditions, or people often refer to them as unifieds. Um, they're held every year in like big hotspots, so you'll find one like in New York or like in LA, and a bunch of colleges will go to that to watch your audition. Um, great for um, sort of hitting a bunch of colleges at the same time. Um, you don't get to see their, there are pros and cons though. You don't exactly get to see their like um, campuses or like meet as many of their faculty. So there are pros and cons to going to Unifieds versus going to specific school auditions. Um, I think the next one is uh, pre-auditions, pre-screen auditions. Um, this was not a thing that was happening when I was auditioning for BFA programs, um, but is seemingly a thing that happens a lot more now. A pre-screen is like this uh, video you send in of your audition package to the schools, and, they, and you have to pass the pre-screen to then go to get an audition. So it's almost like a dress rehearsal for your um, college audition. Um, we also, I also just talked about what an audition package is for folks who might not have done that before. You choose audition pieces, you think about how they might go together, you think about if they're um, contrasting, um, and you time them out, including like when you say your name at the end, the be at the beginning with the slate, and your transition time in between. A lot of colleges have different criteria, so super important to read up on like, they're asking for two monologues and one song, or two contrasting songs and one monologue, that sort of thing. And then we have your slate, which uh, if you haven't done one before an audition, a slate is when you state your name and the pieces you're going to do before your audition. So, hi, my name is Faith House. I'll be doing blah, blah, blah from blah, blah, blah. And then you have a breath and then you begin. So those were just some terminology that I thought I would include in there to help folks who might not know 
um, anything about this world. And that is exactly why we're here to provide. Oh, what a great picture. Oh, you yeah, <laughs> see that yet. Sorry. <laughs> cool. All right. So I think it's finally time to toss it over to Solea. Uh, so, hey, uh, tell me, uh, Solea, how did you choose what you wanted to do after high school? Yeah, so I went to Roosevelt High School here in Seattle, um, and that that was a, a program, um, incredible, an incredible program at a public school that I think, had I not um, been a part of it, I, I think my life probably would have been on a different course. But I remember um, finding out, like my freshman year of high school, that I could major in musical theater in college, and the idea of that kind of blew my mind. I was like, "There's a there's a way that I can." just you know do what I love all day every day um, as school I can study it and kind of just like you know eat breathe and sleep musical theater and that just sounded like the dream to me um, and from jump honestly kind of I think it was because there were a fair amount of alumni who had gone to Michigan in years prior um, I had kind of had my sights on university, the University of Michigan, getting a BFA in musical theater at the University of Michigan um, pretty early on. Um, and so I, and I, I think it's important to say that I also never had a lead in anything at school um, before I started auditioning. I, it, <laughs> I think that's very important. All I knew was that I loved it. Um, and um, so I, I, for whatever reason, I just, I had this kind of blind faith in myself that I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I was like, I know that I love to do this more than anything. I want to study it. I want to, you know, I, because I had never had a lead or anything and I still wanted to do it, that kind of almost enforced it for me. I was like, yeah, no matter what, this is what I want to do and know more about. Um, and I think that when it comes to deciding your higher education, um, when it comes to making that choice as to what you want to study, um, I think you kind of can't go wrong when it comes to following your heart. When I think there, you kind of can't go wrong um, when it comes to dedicating um, your education to your passion. Um, and so I uh, auditioned, I auditioned for 14 colleges though, I will say. They always say, everyone says that you, that girls have to apply to a million places and that, you know, the chances of getting into these places are, are, are slim because the programs are often very small. Um, the University of Michigan has about 22 people on average in each class. Um, and I think upwards of 1,500 to 2,000 kids are auditioning. So it's like a, it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a competitive process, but it's also the fastest growing major. Um, but I, I applied to about 14 schools and I was really, really lucky that I was in an environment um, that really had a lot of people who had been through the process before. Um, and I had a lot of resources. So I had people who helped me decide my repertoire. I had an amazing voice teacher. Um, Ann Evans, who I'm sure there are some people who are watching this who have taken with her, I have to imagine. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, um, but I just prepared like crazy. Um, I read up on the places that I, that I was looking at. And um, one of the things that they say to you at Michigan when you go to audition, um, that I think is almost, almost harsh, but kind of true, is that when it comes to deciding between a conservatory versus a university, and what that means. Um, and if you, if you think that you want to go to conservative, like if you're auditioning for a bunch of conservatories and universities, like th what the head of our program would say is that you don't necessarily know what you want, which is fine. When you are 17, 18, 16 years old, it is so okay to not know um, what you want yet from your college experience. Um, but I think it's a really important thing to give a lot of thought to because you're going to spend a ton of money and um, a ton of time at whatever institution that you decide to attend and so uh, University of Michigan was I mean I was really it was my first choice for a long time um, it was the first place I auditioned for and it was the first place that I heard back from so all those four, 13 other schools I was just like what a waste of time but I guess cast a wide net and see what happens um, but I knew that University of Michigan was the place for me because I have two college professor parents who, you know, they were like, you're going to get a degree, okay, we're going to support you to get a degree in whatever you want. Um, but what drew me to, 
to the the program at Michigan was that it's like a cons what they say is that it's a conservatory style program within a university setting. Um, so at Michigan, unlike some other conservatories, you actually are able to double major if you want. Um, you can minor in anything else. And basically after the first two years that you're there and you get a lot of your prerequisites done, you have the freedom to explore um, other things. And when you're going to that great of a university, like to take advantage of the other classes that are there, it would be such a way, you know, to not do it would be such a waste. Um, but I, I, for me, and the kind of artist that I wanted to be, I, I knew that I wasn't, you know, for me, I was like, I'm not, my dream was never to be like kicking, kicking my face necessarily, or uh, I, I was never much of a dancer and that used to really freak me out. Um, but one thing that I really, the, the program at Michigan, what I loved about it was that we really had the freedom to become the kind of artist that we wanted to be and really shape our education. So like, I had the opportunity to um, go abroad and just, learn about Shakespeare for five months and not even touch a piece of music. Um, but I, I think that that is kind of the first question that I wish I had, um, that I think a lot of kids should, I wish I had known and had time to think about that. Just like, what kind of artist do you want to be? Who do you want to emulate? Whose career are you looking at being like, that's the one. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I answered your question. Orlando, I'm not sure. <laughs> that was a really, really roundabout way yeah. to tell you about my my experience getting to Michigan. But yeah. Did you ever have like, a, it sounded like you, you had an idea of what you wanted to do, but did you, you know, ever have to make a like, was there ever a tough decision in there? Like between two schools or like you were just... Um, ultimately, honestly, from my experience, I knew where I wanted to go I had and it was my dream school and I was kind of like you know because they, they tell you to put like you, your top you, these that like these are my top three schools that I really want right. to go to and kind of like delineate them into not that any program is any better or less than the next but in terms of how you prioritize your needs in a school like it was up there as my number one and so and, and oh I also I went to um, Impulse I did the pre-college summer program which I think is really really good to do anyone considering um, doing a, entering a BFA program, most, or not, maybe not most, but a fair amount of programs offer a pre-college program for after your um, sophomore year of high school or junior year of high school. And you really get a taste, like, so like Impulse, which is the one they have at Michigan. You live in the dorms that you live in as a freshman. You take like a condensed version of the freshman year courses. You, you work with the faculty. And for three weeks, you have the experience of what it's like to be um a student there so i i went there and i was just like oh my god i found my people this is amazing this is where i want to be and so that's actually a very important <laughs> part of the story was that i went and had the experience and really fully w like realized not only do i want to definitely do this um but this is where i want to do it um and i think four people from my class at impulse actually got accepted into the program on a whole which is kind of crazy, um, but I, the, you know, there were also people who went to that program with me who, like, by the end, were like, maybe this isn't for me, and <laughs> and that was like a really important um, lesson for them to learn. But pre-college programs are an amazing um, thing to do, so you kind of get a taste of what what the day to day feels like of living that college student life. I. I'm wondering, I just want to jump in with a question because I feel like it's directly related to this. Um, we have one a question um, from Mika. How do you know whether doing musical theater job is what you should do? Um, are there any questions you can ask you about the course of the you would like to do? And I just thought that sort of dovetailed nicely with the idea of someone going, actually, this may not be for me. Yeah, um, I, I, I feel in my, I, I think the question shouldn't be whether you should it should be whether you want to because deciding to have a life as an artist for any any type of artist um means a lot of sacrifice and life as in um life as a professional actor in musical theater specifically um has a lot of ups and downs and you have to the the there's the ups you have to really enjoy your ups and really be ready to work really really hard even when you're not getting paid even when you're not sure what's going to happen next like it's a it's a hard it's a it's a it's a life that takes a lot of work 
Um, and so uh, when it comes to whether you should or shouldn't, it's more just like, how much do you want it? <laughs> I think more than anything. And if it's, and if it's the life that you want more than anything, then I think you should do it. I think if you can see yourself being really happy doing anything else, for me, I kind of like, was like this, I know that this is what I want to do. And I've been really fortunate that the world has kind of enforced my life experience so far have kind of enforced that decision that it was the right one. Um, but I won't lie and say that it's easy. Like there are times when this life gets really, really hard and I'm like, maybe I should have been an accountant or something, <laughs> but, but that only lasts 30 seconds. And I'm like, thank, thank goodness. This is what I do. Um, but I think ultimately, um, it's a, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough financial life sometimes too. Um, but I, I think the question should be like, will this path make you happiest and will even the hard times fuel you and, and make you feel like you are living a fulfilling life? Yeah, that's what I would say. Great, I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. This is sounding so great. So I had a question and I actually saw this question pop up in the chat a few times. So the question was, how do you decide the best audition song for your college auditions? We were talking about, you know, those audition packages and coupling it up and making sure it complements each other. So how do you go through that decision making process on what you're going to do? Yes, totally. This is such a good question because I think a lot of people what makes auditioning for colleges as opposed to like for a show or something like you, they are audition when you are going into audition for a program, they are really trying to, you know, within that like 10 minute period that you might be in the room, you know, it's such a short time, but they're trying to like learn as much about you as a unique individual as possible. And so I think one thing that people try to do is like, they try to, choose material that shows them everything that you can do, like shows your highest note and like your best riff and like this, that, and the other thing. When in reality, like you don't need to go crazy. Um, I think material that feels as personal as you can make it um, and that really highlights your strengths, like one thing that they say in Michigan, they're like, we're not looking for the next Audrey McDonald. We're not looking for the next Adina Menzel. Like we're looking for you. Like we already have that person. So I think there's no like get off of college confidential right now. <laughs> if you've ever looked, it doesn't, none of it's true. It'll only stress you out and your parent, it'll stress your parents out. Like there is no, like, if you sing like Rogers and Hammerstein for this, like you'll definitely get into Penn State. Like it's not, none of it's true. Um, I, I think showing, um, picking material that really shows truthful sides of yourself. Like if, if you're, if you're funny and quirky and you know that that's what you do, then find like a great song that shows off that part of what you do. Um, but I think finding material that makes, that you love to do, like something that you can go in and do on your worst day. That's what our coaches would say. They'd be like, choose a song that if you woke up with strep throat, <laughs> you know that you could still give a good audition. Like, don't go out there trying to sing like Defying Gravity, you know, like at like 9 a.m. at your audition in the snow at Michigan. Like, you'll be so upset that you chose something so crazy. Like, choose something that like is in your body and in your bones, something that you do every day. Um, that's what I did with my auditions. Like I sang my cuts every single day for like a year. Um, I, I did, I had, I did breathe from in the Heights and I did a legit song from this really old niche musical that nobody knows called No, No, Nanette. Um, but, and it was this beautiful soprano song. So I've been working on that part of my voice at that time. And so, but they were songs that felt very truthful to me as a person. Um, but neither of those songs are really like trying to go crazy because, you know, what you don't want to do to the people you're auditioning for is make them feel um, scared for you. <laughs> you know, if they're like, is this, is this person going to be able to sing this? Like, that's not what you want. You want them to feel at ease and like they're getting to know you as a person. Um, like, I, I think people get caught up in trying to be the right version for the school. And ultimately you don't want to be somewhere. Um, you don't want to get accepted somewhere because you gave a version of yourself that wasn't truthful to you at the end of the day. So I think 
um, when it comes to choosing material, search far and wide, add a ton of things to your book. Um, and, you know, cause I mean, I guess a lot of people either probably just are about to start this process for the next year or have already auditioned probably, right? I would think. Um, so for upcoming, like rising seniors in this coming year, the summer is a perfect time to just start looking at material and like discovering old age musicals and like other, you know, researching other performers that you think um, have repertoire that might be good for you. Finding those, making cuts, and then doing them every day, doing, doing them for a ton of different people, really listen to feedback that other people are giving you. Um, but I think first and foremost, choose something that feels really authentic to who you are as a person and that you can do comfortably pretty much no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, adding on to what uh, Anna or is it Anna? It's Anna, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to double check. <laughs> um, adding on to what uh, they said, uh, what do you think is the top three things that uh, colleges are ultimately looking for when you audition? Hmm, I think, well, one thing that can take the personal aspect out of it is that they're looking for like a rounded class of like all different types of people you know call, the, these programs don't want to have a bunch of people of like the same you know type features into what colleges you get into as well um because they're not looking for a bunch of people who are the same like they want to programs want to be diverse and filled with different kinds of actors and, and artists um but i think first and foremost um, would be adherence to whatever guidelines they've put out there. Like when they say it's a 16 bar cut that we want, we want two 16 bar cuts. If you come in there with like a 32 bar thinking that that's what they want to hear, that's like the first strike one against you. So like when, it, when, it, when a college says like, this is what we're looking for, this is what you should bring, do exactly that, you know? Like I had a binder for every um, college that had like I was so organized. I don't think I've ever been more organized than <laughs> this process because it's kind of like strangely enough and in and it's kind of unfair. It's one of like the highest stakes auditions that you have because it kind of determines a path of your life um, more so than for any other show. And so it's really worth putting a lot of time into. Um, but showing a college that you are prepared and that you did your homework. Um, I think that is the biggest thing beyond any big note, beyond any fierce thing that you could do. They want to know that you are someone who really, um, you know, will, will do your best when, once you're in, they want hard workers. So I think showing that like, you're like, yes, I saw what you wanted and I brought exactly that to show you and more. And you can, you know, having <laughs> extra options is always good too. I think that would be the first thing. Um, the second thing I think would be, um, people who know a lot about the university itself, like having questions about the university, because they're as lucky to have you as you are to have them. Um, so I think doing your due diligence in terms of learning about the actual university and having questions to ask them once you get there, um, should you have the opportunity is a really good thing to do. And lastly, I would say um, they're looking for individuals, you know, like, I remember um, seeing, like, thinking that I had to wear, like, nude heels and a pastel dress that was kind of conservative. Like, that's exactly what I wore. And then I got to Unifieds, and that was what every single other girl was wearing. And I was like, you know, like, maybe I could have gone with something that, you know, represented more of who I am as a person as opposed to what I thought was correct. Um, you know, not that you'll get points off for anything, but, like, I think the point being, um, taking time to really think about like what I was saying before, like what kind of artist you want to be, what kind of person you want to be. Um, I think that's um, important because they, you know, most of these programs are excited to have like, you know, people who are going to be the next generation of this industry. And, you know, what, so many, you know, a lot of the people that I went to college with now um, are writers or producers or are way in, are into directing. So like, I think coming in, knowing what the program has to offer, having questions to ask, and um, bringing your most authentic self, that's what 
I think people prepared authentic people is who is who is who colleges are looking for I think yeah <laughs> I think, I think w one thing I'll put out there too just on that note is I've heard faculty people talk about um, really being engaged by students who know why they're doing this you know mm -hmm. I think it's really easy for people to be like oh yeah I, I, I just love being on stage and that's that's valid like love being on stage but also if you also have a bigger understanding about your role as an artist or as an actor, why you're actually doing this, why you're trying to make this connection with people and performing and telling stories, though, that function in our society is really important. And so if you have an understanding of that, um, it's at the very least gonna help you in your essay, but you know, it's also gonna give you yeah. kind of a guiding light. <laughs> But that's just, as, the essay is just as important as the rest. Like, I think people think that it's like, if I can kick my face and like, you know, be really fierce in my audition, then I'll definitely get in. And that's not the case, you know, especially like somewhere like Michigan, like the point is that they want well-rounded artists, like people who are interested in the world on a whole, not just in like being the fiercest singer or whatever. Um, and so the essays matter and like the personal, the personal content really does matter when it comes to this whole process. So to really taking, um, taking your time with those essays is also, and getting started early. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Starting to take a look because, because it's a lot of that, the, the essays are probably the most time consuming part of the, of the whole thing. And they, they really, it really does matter. Um, so yeah, to, to just, I, I think. And, and that will carry through your professional life as well. You can kind of never be too prepared for, for anything when it comes to this, this line of work. Yeah. I was gonna kick it over to <laughs> Sarah. Sorry, I was like talking and I was still muted. Um, Sarah, go ahead. Do you have any questions that you're, you're clocking over there? Yeah, we have a question from Ella and a few other people actually have similar, just similar wonderings. Um, a big one is how, do you have any advice on um, resume building and what kind of programs colleges look for, maybe in the high school or like shows or classes, just certain programs that look maybe better on resumes or not, or if there is a right way to do it or what kind of things to put on your resume. Or additionally, like if it's not about the program, but like how could you gain just experience if you haven't done a lot of musical theater? Totally. I mean, I think, you know, when they're looking at your resume, they're trying to see, you know, how serious you are about it. And that said also, there aren't necessarily those kind of resources everywhere, which I think is important to acknowledge. Like there, you know, Seattle is ripe with opportunities for young actors and it's incredible like there are workshops to attend and there's like village kids and like the fifth like there's an ACT there's all these amazing it's crazy it's so like if you if the youth of Seattle doesn't know how lucky they are to have all these <laughs> resources then they should know that that's really rare um so at least for me like I was thoroughly involved in drama throughout high school um, and so I, I took all the classes that were available to me. Um, but then I also, I took training with a voice teacher. I had a monologue coach as well. Um, but I think keeping your eye out for master classes that are coming up so that you can like throw, like I took a master class with so-and-so and you can write that down. Um, but I think ultimately you know that was just like my my interest anyways um for any school they're going to look for extracurriculars to see how important you are and how dedicated or how important or how important it is in your life and how dedicated you are um and serious about it um so i think because like you know not everyone can take classes with a monologue coach and so i don't want people to worry that like if, if they're, you know, if that's not a possibility in their world to like sign up with coaches and do this, that, and the other thing, um, that searching for just, I think, exposure in general to master classes um, and, and workshops and camps and some like those kind of things are like the best things to build it. But also, um, the, I don't think that things on your resume are ever, those can bolster it, but that's never gonna be the deciding factor 
when it comes to um, whether or not they let you in. So I don't want anyone to be freaked out if they're like, my family can't afford to take this kind of lesson or take me to this or go to that summer program because that it's expensive and that's just the reality. Um, so I don't want anyone to think that they are out of the running if, if those things aren't possible, um, but they are extra bonuses. But I don't think that that should be um, the a main a stressor <laughs> when it comes to this whole thing. But I would say take especially like take a look at the extracurriculars available at your school. Um, start a club if there's nothing else at your school. Like do you know? Yeah, like be proactive about um, like if it, even if it just means that you guys are reading plays together. Like find a way to get your community get together to um, learn more about um, about your craft. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Yeah, and we, we don't want to um, mince words about, you know, some people have to hustle more than others. You know, that's the reality of, of yeah. our, our, our country and, and, and opportunity and resources. And, and that, that's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's not ideal. Some people have to hustle more than others. But also know that especially, if you hustle, yeah, go ahead. Oh, so oh, just especially in the arts, it's such a game of resources. And that's just right. true. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know one... Um, kind of like, uh, uh, I don't know a theater program here in the area, a regional theater, that doesn't offer scholarships or help for people who, who um, show the passion and who, who can hustle for, to, to be proactive about pursuing those. So just keep that in mind as well. Don't think um, just because, you know, something looks like the, the, the tuition on there is, is, is cost prohibitive, give them a call and just see what, the, what can be done about that, because uh, every theater, including the Fifth Avenue Theater, um, uh, should have some, some resources for you um, if you go after them. It's so, yeah, it's so true. People are actively wanting to be able to help people learn how to do this. So I think just taking a look around your community and seeing what resource, and, and there's a lot of online coaching now. There's like Broadway Collective and Broadway Method Academy. They're all, all my friends run them. Like, <laughs> it's great. There's so many, um, there's so many different ways to kind of get trained these days and get exposure. So, yeah. Are there any other questions? Yes. Um, speaking of which, I'm doing the Broadway Collective Study Hall thing right now. So oh, no way! <laughs> oh, yeah. Amazing. Um, I had a question. Uh, how do you find um, coaches and master classes um, when you don't know where to go? Totally. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we, it's a cyber world we're living in. And, um, by you know, just taking a look at like, looking at some of your, uh, oftentimes a lot of people's favorite, um, actors and actresses, especially in musical theater, actually do a lot of personal coaching or online coaching. Um, but I think a quick trip to Google is honestly <laughs> the best way or, or, or asking like, if there are people in the professional world, like, that you know personally if you can ask them and just be like hey who do you study with who do you take with i think this is a community of people um across the board when it comes to the broadway community to regional communities all over the country like people people want to talk and tell everyone about who they're studying with like that's not those aren't secrets that people are keeping um so i think reach out reach out to the people that you admire you people probably will get back to you and let you know and give you some good advice. So I think it's just a matter of just like asking those questions and going to those people and seeing what's available. You know, like if for anyone who didn't, doesn't know about Broadway Collective or Gathered or any of the other things that Robert Hartwell does, like go to Google right now and take a look because um, that's one fantastic resource that's available within like minutes. So yeah. I would put a, a plug out there for, for doing some of your, like master classes are great, but there's, there's also this, this aspect of like you going and doing your own research, you know, of like mm -hmm. of reading books, <laughs> read plays. some books and read some plays and listen to musicals yeah. and go be curious about your craft and, and what's been done before you. Um, because I think there's so much wisdom um, in the past that, that we can, you know, we can, access totally. with enough curiosity so and i feel like i feel like trying to go see as much live theater as possible um is a really good thing to do be it like shakespeare in the park to a full-on fifth avenue show or like a tour that's coming through the paramount or something like i think it's uh really worth 
trying your best to just see as much, just consume it and, and, and really feel it. And cause you, you learn by watching people all the time too. And it's funny during this time we'd be like, well, we can't be seeing live theater, but actually so many people are posting up. I know it's not, it's not the same as going to watch theater live, but so many regional theaters are putting their stuff up from past years. Yeah. So, so archived performances of, of, of plays and musicals are, are all over the place now. And so, um, go looking for that while we're all stuck inside. <laughs> yeah, so many theaters. If you just literally Google like theater streaming um, live right now, like National Theater in London, like ballets, operas, like it's all suddenly free at your fingertips. So I would say like truly Google is a huge resource right now. I think we got time for one more question from the ether. You gotta get either Sarah or Faith, you got a good one lined up here. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, this is an ongoing conversation, right? So if you feel like your your uh, question wasn't answered today, we're going to be doing more uh, talks on um, paths out of high school. So don't don't worry, this is not your one opportunity. Um, but we're talking specifically about um, BFA and BA roots for performing um, sort of roots today. Um, and there are, just so people know, BFA and BA in like, stage management in costume design so those do exist and they are a different process of getting in you have to send a portfolio that sort of stuff and there's again lots of resources online for that um but uh we've had a couple questions about people who are currently seniors and seemingly have been accepted at uh like i mean we've got allison who's choosing between two college bfa programs which is like number one allison you got to do, get a girl um so if i was looking if i was an accepted or if student at um, multiple programs, what are some things that I should consider as I weigh my options? Or as Allison weighs her options? Totally. I mean, I think you, sh Allison, you should make a list um, that has nothing to do with the programs themselves, but just about what your priorities are. Um, make a list of the things that you want from a program. And then maybe even make a list of things that you that you don't, or, or, you know, if there are certain things that you know about yourself, like I knew for me, um, a BA probably wasn't going to be um, my thing, because I was, you know, kind of actively looking for a conservatory style, like I want to be doing musical theater all the time, basically, and that's fully what I got. Um, but if that's not necessarily on, on your priority list and you're just like, I love musical theater, but I also really love geology and I want a chance to study that or like women's studies or something, which is totally valid, then it's probably, if you're like, I don't want to have class every single day from nine to five and then rehearsal from seven to 11, because that's what my life was basically like for four years. I was tired all the time. I was happy, but like that, you know, most college students don't have class every day um, the way we did. Um, so it's a, just a different experience. And so I think the first thing to do is make a list of what's most important to you in your experience. And then now that you've gotten accepted, um, I, I know for me, when I was in school, it, the it, we were so excited to talk to potential students. Um, we were like chomping at the bit to tell them everything about our experience at Michigan. So I would say reach out to any current students who are there, ask them what their day-to-day -day is like, ask them what they love about the program, ask them what they don't love about the program. They'll, they'll be honest with you, I promise. Um, but ultimately, I think don't make a, don't make a decision to go to a program because just because you think it's like the fiercer program or the better program because that is never a good <laughs> that's not that has nothing to do with what your experience might be um i think you have to make the decision based on like the kind of person that you are hoping to kind of be molded into so like if you take a look at the alumni and what you know their lives have been like post their time there but i think it's a really personal and really big decision um, and so just gather as much information as you can and kind of tally it, maybe make, once you've made a list of your own priorities, then I think it's wise to, um, take each school, just make it super, I'm, I'm a list person when it comes to making hard decisions. So like when you're like program A, program B, these are the thing, these are the pros, these are the cons, these are the pros, these are the cons. 
Um, if, if like you love a program, but it's going to put you $200,000 in debt, maybe not worth it, mm -hmm. but maybe worth it. I'm, I'm going to be in debt forever, but it's okay because I had a great time. <laughs> you know, like it totally depends on what your priorities are. Cause some other people would be like, I cannot deal with that. I would rather have a, like a debt free life. You know, I, and I think it's important to say before this is done, um, that I, have I, I've been lucky to work a lot since school um, but I have worked with people who never set foot on a college campus I have worked with people who like it was their first musical you know and so truly there is no right path there's just the one for you and like there's some st statistic that I snaps all around <laughs> there's, there's just <laughs> there's a statistic that I saw um, somewhere that was like 70% of college, uh, college students change their major. And I don't think, you know, when you enter, yeah, people change you, there's such a high chance that you might be like, I don't necessarily know if I want to do this. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think, um, one thing that has guided me in my life, um, so far, which is, it's hard to do at age 17. You're not supposed to know exactly what you want your life to look at. But like, I think it's, it's so crazy that such a big decision has to be made at such a young age. So don't forget that. If it feels like a hard decision, it's because it is, it's a big one and an amazing one. And ultimately, um, I think if you are, and you know, like when you go to, when you go to college or, or don't go to go to college, whatever, like those years post high school, when you're really discovering like the adult person that you want to be you're living on your own for the first time you know there's the educational part of it but also just the person part of it and you're like it, where are you going to be the happiest like most thriving person is it going to be like literally are you not going to be happy in the midwest that's a valid question so like what is the environment that is going to allow you um to really figure out who you are because that's the point of college even more than anything else you know some people don't even need to go so i you know like i know plenty of people who are like i like college was not for me i was done with formal education and i'm so glad i didn't go and i'm like work that's amazing and you still ended up here i would never take my decision back debt and and all because you know it led to me being the person that i am now i met the most magical people in the world while i was there i fell in love in college like all that all that stuff um but think of your life on a whole and think of the big picture and what matters to you. And I think if you just like take a minute, like take like a half hour to just like meditate and think about your future and your life and think about kind of a big picture, which is kind of hard to do um, when you're 17, but like the world is really your oyster in a major way. And I think when you think of the big picture, what kind of artist person you wanna be when you imagine your dream life, you know, which, which it, you should, you know, like so many things that have happened in my life. I was like, this will never happen. And I'm like, it happened. Ah. And I think that it is. So I think it's like, you know, it's just like, don't like really start thinking of your dreams as potential realities and um, making choices that serve that reality will help you. That seems like a big philosophical thing, but it's, it makes choices so much easier. Cause at the end of the day, if you're like, I don't know if I want to go to like Point Park and become an insane dancer or like Carnegie Mellon and work on my, my parking and barking, like who knows, you know, like there's different kind of artists come out of these programs. Um, and so I think just like truly thinking of the big picture and being like, what decision best serves the path that I dream of the most. Cause those dreams actually like come true. You think that they won't and then they, and then they can and do. And so like, assume that your dreams will come true and make decisions based on serving that. I would say, goodness. I go off on such tangents. No, that was great. It's would... beautiful. <laughs> there were so many, beautiful. I feel like there were so many moments I just wanted to put on like quote posters, like <laughs> in great. front of like mountains. <laughs> well, this is a huge topic. We could go on like this for the whole weekend, um, but I think that's also a beautiful place to end it. So yeah, thank you so much. Before we totally sign off though, we do, hey, everybody hang around. We got to do our Fridays at the Fifth Weekly Challenge. What? Boom. Oh my Thank God. You. Toss I mean, it over to you, Faith. Orlando's got a slide for it. <laughs> Go, Faith.
Yeah, so this week we challenge people to do recreation moments of musicals, just like how we was doing recreation moments of museum art, which, I mean, if you haven't looked that up, you need to do that. Your quarantine will be much better for it. Um, but we challenge people to do recreations of musicals. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, I will admit, this is one that I did, and I'm really honored slash horrified that it's being shared. Um, I guess the musical, <laughs> am I right? Uh, I just thought, um, I can't let all the students have all the fun, so I just thought I'd jump in there. Um, that was my Mr. Cellophane moment. I left it on the counter for my roommates, and they've both been like, what <laughs> is on our counter? <laughs> Anywho, moving right along. Um, this week we have a challenge for you guys, um, and, uh, you don't need to put it on Instagram on, like, a, a a forever post happy for you to just stick it in a story and just tag us it doesn't need to be like part of your um forever online life but if you just put it in your story and tag us we'll snag it right off there um so you can put it on twitter you can put it on your story um you could put it on tiktok i would watch it um and we're talking about musical theater life-changing moments so a picture of you in a role that changed your life or a picture of you attending a show that changed your life maybe just a little blurby blurb about how one time you watched Susical at your little sister's middle, middle school and it was like game changing and you're like i need to do i don't know I don't need to go lay an egg or something like that. I don't know. Um, I don't know because it's your story. But uh, do tag us in your life-changing musical theater stories. I'm looking for some inspiration in my life. Tag us at Fridays at the 5th. Uh, tag us at, at Fifth Avenue Theater. We want to see these. We want to uplift you. want to also maybe share it on our Fifth Avenue Instagram. So, hey, tag us. We want to see it. There we go. Cool. Thanks, Faith. Yay. So let's get that. Um, thank you so much again to our student panelists, Lanaya and Anna, and to the fabulous, fantastic, fierce, Saleya Pfeiffer. <laughs> Try that. Um, and thank you all out there for joining us. If you're into Fridays at the 5th, um, please consider supporting it. Oh, there's the slide. Uh, we're committed to offering Fridays at the 5th uh, long distance for free, but there is a little bit cost associated, so please consider donating. Text 5TH to 56512 to receive a link to donate. And um, before we go, Anna, do you have anyone you want to shout out to before we sign off? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to give a quick shout out to the Fifth Avenue Rising Star program right now. Um, yeah, um, they are all a group of very brilliant, very creative minds, and I'm very, very proud of them. They're coming close to finishing some scripts that. You can come and see. Anna, you have a deadline. <laughs> I know, I have a deadline. <laughs> Lanaya, do you have someone you want to shout out or people or things? Yes, yes, yes. Um, my Burns cast, um, Mr. Burns post lecture play. That's the best cast in the world right now to me. Um, <laughs> 1438 and yes, RSP. <laughs> Sarah, anybody you want to shout out? Yes, RSP as well. Previous years of RSP. Yes, a I lot think. of Rising Star yeah. Project love here today. So, yeah, yeah, I wish we I had Rising Star awesome. Project when you were in school. Oh, that would have been so great. Oh, my God. It's one of the programs that you're talking about that we have here that we're so lucky to have. I just, it's incredible. Uh, and Soleil, finally, do you have anybody you want to shout out before we, we sign off here? Yes, I'm gonna shout out all the to all the high school seniors who maybe didn't get to walk or do their last musical this year. My heart goes out to you. I can't even imagine what that must have felt like. And I'll give a special shout out to the seniors at Roosevelt High School. I was you, um, and just don't don't forget that like as amazing and huge as high school feels, like it'll feel like a distant memory soon. And you've got the rest of your life ahead of you, and y'all should be so excited. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I got well, it. We'll everybody, it. everybody, all our panelists, go ahead and unmute yourselves. Um, thank you again for kicking with us today. One day we'll be back at the theater. But until then, wash those hands, stay safe, make Love art, you. keep on keeping on. We'll see you next oh, week. Do you want to talk about what's happening next week? Yeah, yeah. Special guests next week, Kit Yan and Melissa Lee, two up-and-coming musical theater writers. Hey, while we're all stuck at home, we might as well learn how to write a new musical, right? So don't miss right. that. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
And uh, hey, panelists, just join me in saying goodbye. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. 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 We love you all. Bye. 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 Wash your hands. Please wash your hands.